I still get lost. This place is so big. <laughs> Uh, tell me something, will you? What? If someone had a brain operation, where would they put them? It depends on the case. Is it a man or a woman? A child. Very likely in the children's section. Twelfth floor, west wing. Uh, this side? Uh. Oh, thank you. Twelve, please. Fourth floor. Going up. Eleven. Oh, boy, everything all right? Yes, Dr. Eleven floor. the faculty. It's a terrible thing. His brother is mixed up in a scandal in the East, and just because a few cranks wrote some letters to the regents, the man loses his position in the department. Cornwall won't fight for him. I just don't understand it. What's wrong, dear? Nothing. Why don't you get some sleep? I I'm not tired, John. Can I warm you up some milk? I tell you the truth, I just hate warm milk. Paula, you've been very tense these last few days. Please, don't you? John. I'm all right. Good night, John. Good night, John. He's been hit by a car and he's lost his speech. He can't talk at all. Not at all. The boy's lost the power of speech. I wasn't sure till we ran all these tests on him. 
When the car hit him, there was concussion in the area of the brain that controls speech and writing. The condition is known as motor aphasia. But he seems to know what's going on. He reacts, he, he understands what the other children are saying. Yes, he does. That's the trouble. The boy can think. He wants to express his thoughts. But the memory of how to express them is gone. <laughs> A scientist friend of mine once sat down to list all the possible combinations of movements of lips, tongue, larynx, breath that we use in normal everyday speech. <laughs> When he got to 1100, he quit. Now, the Larson boy doesn't even know one combination. He can't even clear his throat. He's like a newborn baby. Will he always be that way? Well, he needs a teacher. What can a teacher do? Re-educate him. Teach him to speak again. The process isn't complicated. It takes time. Time and patience and more time. Months and months, sometimes years. That's the trouble. No teacher. There's no one in my staff who can spare the time. It's a shame, too. Paul, oh, last week you said you felt restless, that you wanted to do something useful. How would you like to do something really useful? You could do this job. I'd show you how. You mean I, I could teach him to speak again? It would mean taking him into your house. He'd have to live there. And it would mean endless hours of hard, nerve-wracking work. But he's a nice boy, Paula. He, he needs love and comfort and help. John wants to adopt a child. Uh, let me talk it over with him, will you, Cliff? Sure, sure. Yes. Thanks. Mrs. Rogers, I'm very glad to see you. Thank you. It's nice to see you again, Professor. What are you doing here? Giving the boys a thrill? John, I found a child. What? Well, you still want to adopt a child, don't you? Well, yes. Well, I found one, a boy. Fine. Seven years old. Wonderful. There's only one thing. What's that? He can't talk. Can't talk? What do you mean he can't talk? The lawyer's motor aphasia. Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. I checked with Dr. Dahlberg on the way over here. He's not as optimistic as you. Well, I think I know more about this particular case. Cliff, I'm as open to new ideas as the next one. Do you know how much I want a child? But why does it have to be a freak? He's not a freak, John. I know, I know. That was foolish. I'm dean of a college, and I talk to the students about charity, tolerance, emotional maturity. But when it comes down to personal application, Cliff, I'm just another man who wants to raise a son he can brag about. Did you tell all this to Paula? I started to, but I couldn't finish. Why? She started to cry. Paula's been pretty tense lately. You were right about her reaction to losing the baby. Yes, and I'll make another little prophecy. What is it? Unless Paula can find something to lose herself in, She's going to get worse. You might find yourself dealing with a psychoneurotic. Look, Cliff, I don't want to adopt the boy. That's definite. But if it will help Paula, could I bring the boy to my home with the understanding that the orphanage will find him a permanent home later? Well, I think that could be arranged. All right. When does he come? About 10 days. I think you're doing a wonderful thing, Mrs. Rogers. To tell you the truth, we were quite worried about Davy's case. The orphanage just doesn't have the money this therapy would cost. Oh, Davy doesn't mind if we talk about him, do you? You don't know how lucky you are to be moving into a nice home like this, Davy. It isn't every little boy who gets a chance to be with nice people like Mr. and Mrs. Rogers. Miss Smith, there it is. That's our house over there. Oh.
Uh, good night, Miss Smith, and thanks for driving us home. Good night. I will see you sometime. Oh, I will. Good night, Davy. <laughs> This is David. Oh, David? Don't you want to be Yes. Oh, Cora. David, is it Cora? You left your little heart. He's so skinny. We're going to have to fatten you up, David. I have supper for both of oh, us. Oh, I'm sorry, Cora. I should have called you. We've already had supper. Oh. Tonight's your first night, isn't it? But I don't mind like giving it up. Oh, no, no. You go right ahead. John and I can put David to bed. All right. <laughs> Oh, thank you, dear. Come on, baby. Be on the warning, baby. You come down early and I'll show you how to make rock roll. Good night, Cora. Good night. John, I have everything all arranged for the school. Mm -hmm. Baby, first Monday, I'll be to school. Is this right up where you left off? You're in the second grade, aren't you, baby? Good night. Good night, Cora. Good night. This is your room, baby. Do you like it? Yeah. I'm going to put right over here in the closet. This is where we're going to keep all your things. Right in here. And this bureau. That belongs to you, too. We're going to keep your pajamas and your underwear and all everything I've got in there. Well, it's uh, getting pretty late, David, so after you put away a few of your things, then you can take a nice warm bath and get in the bed, all right? Uh, put these in the bedroom, will you? Take baths. Little boys always say they hate them, but I don't believe that. All they can have too much fun is splashing around in the water and playing with bones and things. And this is where they keep it too fresh. Hmm? Yeah. Well, I want you to remember what I told you. You must have been to watch those, uh, bones. Oh, my God. 
Thank you. 